All right, I have 631 on the clock. Most folks have logged in that were registered. Welcome to our class. We really appreciate you joining us tonight. As we just mentioned, I know you have a lot going on in the evenings. It's just uh, after dinner time, maybe dinner time at your home. So we appreciate you letting us into your home tonight for this presentation. We have more classes this spring, so if this is something you really like, uh, be sure to share this with other folks that may be interested in the class itself. Uh, we will have these basic Skywarns, an advanced one, and also a Coco Ross training through the month of May. So please help us spread the word. My name is Eric Hayden. I'm a forecaster with the office in Moorhead City. My address, email address is at the bottom. I will provide my email contact again. You will hear from me with a class follow-up tomorrow. I'll include a course certificate if you weren't able to download it tonight. And uh, the best way to get a hold of me is certainly uh, via email. A couple bits of technical information to go over. All of your microphones have been muted, so just kind of kick back and relax. You don't have to worry about the kids in the background, dogs barking, anything like that. We've already taken care of that. If you don't want to see any more of me and you'd rather see the presentation larger, you can stretch it out. On a, a personal computer, you can make the camera go away by stretching, or you can enlarge my camera, whatever you are, um, prefer. If you're watching on a mobile device, you can swipe left or right and make the presentation full screen. So again, you don't really need to see me. So if you don't, if you want to see the words on the presentation, uh, certainly go ahead and enlarge it. Uh, that is your preference. Uh, one thing I mentioned in the beginning um, when folks were just logging in, we have a handout section. In that handout section is your certificate for tonight. I will email that to you again tomorrow just as a backup if you have any trouble um, downloading it. In addition, we have the course itself as a PDF. That is your copy to review after the class. And if we have any internet issues, you'll already have a copy of the presentation. As far as interaction goes, I really encourage you to ask me questions. It's just me doing the class right tonight. So ask it in the chat, and then I will get to the questions at the end. You can also ask by raising your hand. So this is how the panel should look. If you can't see it, uh, just hit this orange arrow and that will show you the panel where you can ask a question. You can send it to the entire audience if you want, or you can just send it to me, uh, whatever your preference is, that's more than fine. Raise your hand at the end if you have a question. And again, at the end of the presentation, we'll do a whole Q&A and I'll sit with you and go through all the questions that we might have. If it comes to your mind now, enter it in the chat, it won't distract me, but just keep in mind that I won't get to those questions until the end since I'm presenting. Uh, the topic itself. So I already see my first mistake in this presentation. I don't know how it made through. I must have corrected it somewhere else. This is actually our fourth year of online classes. So with everything going on, you might think, well, this is why we're doing online classes, when in reality, we've done this for many, many years. Obviously, in past years, it's only a few online classes. Uh, this year, we're all virtual, but we're quite versed with it. So I hope you'll be happy with the class itself. Our goal is you learn a little bit more about the weather service, but the main goal is report severe weather when it happens to your local area, to our local office in Newport. Your information from this class will be used to enter yourself into our spotter database. I'll take care of that. Sit back and enjoy. The class is about 50 minutes, and then we'll go 10 minutes or longer if you want with the Q&A part. First, a couple parts of the class uh, go over the weather service, who we are, a little bit about Skywarn. What is this Skywarn class? Uh, and I'd be curious, I forgot to make the poll question, um, this particular one, but send me a message in chat if you don't mind. Is this your first Skywarn class or have you been with us before? Usually we have about a 50-50 mix. I'd be curious to know if we have a lot of new people or if we have some veterans on there because we will adjust the class depending on how many people have attended a class before in the past. So shoot me a message. I'll, I'll certainly take a look at those uh, throughout the class itself. We're going to go over thunderstorms, how they develop, how they form. Uh, we're going to talk about things like uh, microburst and downburst. We're going to talk about those. Uh, and Bri uh, Brianne, I appreciate you uh, saying that. So we've got a first timer here with Brianne. Uh, so again, let me know, have you been to the class before or not? We're going to go over flooding. And then the main focus of the class is uh, Skywarn reporting. When you have high winds, hail, um, you know, heavy rainfall, we want to know about it. So a couple things to keep in mind. We're going to give you some science. 
it's good to understand it, but you don't have to understand why a tornado forms or how hail forms. We really want you to focus on what to report to us when severe weather happens. So what to report, how should you make the report and when? That's the main thing I want you to focus in on. And I'll highlight that uh, for our second half of the class. And again, ask questions throughout. I'll certainly get to those uh, at the end. And I can see some more folks are chiming in. Uh, so we've got a repeat spotter with Robert. Uh, James mentioned that um, he, this is his first uh, Skywarn class and he mentioned uh, about weather stations. James, we'll talk about that. He had a real good question about uh, weather stations we use in the weather service. Um, but James, I can appreciate that you um, are attending the class. And if you're just logging on, we just ask folks uh, in the chat room to send me a message. Let me know first time Skywarn or have you done this before? So back to who we are. Our main mission is protection of life and property. We issue forecasts, but we also issue watches, warnings, advisories to let you know about bad weather, things like tornadoes, high winds, and hail. So while we do forecasts, and they're certainly important, uh, we issue special products like warnings to alert the public of that bad weather. We do that with a lot of offices in the country. This is kind of a neat puzzle or jigsaw map of all the weather service offices, over 100 in the country. This is a good time to point out, uh, most of us are from Eastern North Carolina. We've got a few from all over the country on the call tonight. We appreciate you joining us. You signed up and based on your address and zip code and all that good stuff, I know where you are, so I'll forward your information onto the local office. Um, the importance of that is all the Skywarn is the same. What to report, uh, what we're looking for, but the contact information is different. So you're going to want to follow up with your local office uh, once I put you in contact. So you get the right email, the right phone number and stuff like that. And I'll have more on that here once we get to that section. So as I mentioned, the majority of us are across eastern North Carolina. We're out of the Newport office. We cover the eastern quarter of North Carolina. Uh, so this does include the Outer Banks, uh, inland places like Greenville, down toward Jacksonville. And you'll notice that this yellow shaded area goes out into the water. We cover forecasts and warnings out to 20 nautical miles. So if you've ever been to the beach or done any boating, uh, we provide forecasts for those areas as well. We are open 24 seven. So much like police, fire, first responders, hospitals, we have a rotating shift of people that work. We always have at least two folks in the office, but if it's like Florence, which is the picture in the upper left, uh, it's all hands on deck. So we change our staffing based on the weather. If it's a quiet Saturday night, there's two of us. If there's severe weather, many, many people at the office itself. Uh, speaking of that, I was lucky to have a place to sleep, uh, an office during Florence. So this is my office itself. And we are a reinforced building. It's a brick building with hurricane shutters that come down over the windows. So we're a higher location in Carteret County, a reinforced building. We're designed to stay there when the weather gets bad. We do have backups, our sister office up in Richmond or the Wakefield office or down in Wilmington. They can take over if we have any real serious issues, uh, either weather or technology wise. So that's a little bit about the weather service. In a second, I'll talk about some of our products and how you can get them. But I don't wanna to go too much more into the presentation without talking about Skywarn. And what is Skywarn? Um, it's a volunteer program run by the weather service. And the main goal is to produce uh, ground truth reports for us. We have radar, we have a great satellite, we have a lot of really, really good tools, but a lot of those tools are looking up in the atmosphere. We need to know what's happening on the ground where people live, and that's where spotters come in to provide ground truth reports. We're getting a few more people interacting with us. Aaron says this is his uh, second sky warn. He did a winter one uh, probably pa this past winter. So Aaron, thank you for joining us. Uh, Dixie did a winter sky warn this past December. We always like repeat people because that means we're doing something right. Uh, David Wright says this is his first online class and we've got Monica all the way from Kansas. Monica, hopefully you're sending us some warmer weather. We're finally warming up here. Uh, let's see, Joshua, this is his first time in the class and he's been interested for a long time. So looks like we have a lot of new folks and we have a good mix of experienced people. So for those that are new to the class, we really appreciate you joining us. And if it is something you like, please share it with friends. Uh, you're usually our best voice to get it out into the community 
that we offer these types of free classes for anybody that wants to attend. If you're just logging in, it's about 640. You're not too late. We're just getting into the first part of the class. And if you haven't had a chance, let me know in chat. Is this the first time you've attended or have you been to Skywarns before? We love hearing uh, how you've been in terms of the program itself. So back to spotters. We mentioned Skywarn provides us with ground truth. You really assist us in the decision process for warnings. A couple examples of that. Um, let's say I'm watching a storm and we think it's producing a pea-sized hail or small hail. And then you call in with a report of larger hail. That lets us know that the storm is a little stronger than we otherwise thought. And if it continues to strengthen, perhaps we even issue a warning based on that report. So you kind of help us gauge how bad it is. Our ultimate goal is to issue warnings when it's bad, but to not issue warnings when it doesn't meet our criteria. We don't want to cry wolf and uh, issue warnings that are not needed. Whenever I do an interview with uh, local media, I emphasize the trained eye of the storm spotter is our greatest asset. Um, Doppler radar, dual pole, uh, GO-16 satellite, fantastic technology, and we certainly use it, but spotters play a big role in confirming what's happening actually at ground level. You can't talk severe weather unless you talk about some fundamental definitions, and you really can't talk any type of weather with the weather service without talk talking about the difference between watches and warnings. Anytime I say a watch, that means conditions are favorable for it to happen. A warning means it's imminent. So no matter what I'm talking about, flooding, tornadoes, thunderstorm, we issue a watch, doesn't mean it's gonna happen. It just means all the ingredients are there. It's kind of like when you cook in a kitchen, um, if I were to have eggs and oil and, and water and a bowl and a brownie mix out, there's a brownie watch. You know probably what's gonna happen. All the ingredients are there, but they haven't been cooked yet. A warning would be, hey, they're in the oven. It's 10 minutes to go with a timer. So that's kind of the difference between a watch and warning. And for a lot of you weather enthusiasts that are into it, you might laugh and say, come on, Eric. You know, I, I know that. But we want people in the community to understand. Because if they don't understand the difference between a watch and warning, how do they know when to seek shelter in their basement? How do they know when to seek shelter in their home uh, versus a tornado? So it is important. As far as a severe thunderstorm goes, uh, we issue warnings based on a strict definition, winds 58 miles per hour or stronger and or um, one inch diameter hail or larger. And we just don't make up those numbers. That's about the threshold that's either damaging or life-threatening. So in the case of hail, damaging to crops and buildings. In the case of wind, um, damaging to property, but could be life-threatening with falling trees and, and things of that nature. You'll notice that lightning is not on there. Lightning is certainly dangerous, but by definition, every thunderstorm has lightning. So we don't want to issue warnings, um, you know, hundreds of times a summer just based on lightning. So we do other things such as special weather statements for that. A couple more key definitions, tornadoes and funnel clouds. I love yellow, my favorite color. So I try to highlight what is important with this. A tornado is a violently rotating column of air in contact with the, the uh, ground. It's gotta be rotating, it's gotta be in contact with the ground. We're gonna have a quiz on that at the end. So that's very, very important. A funnel cloud has got to be rotating too, but it doesn't reach the ground. Again, we, we put the emphasis on has to be rotating. Is, does it connect to the ground? It's a tornado. Does it not connect to the ground? It's a funnel cloud. Remember the key words of rotation and in contact or not with the ground. Uh, it seems real simple, but if you see a swirl in the clouds and it's dark out and the wind picks up, you may start to get excited and think it's a funnel cloud when it's not really rotating. And we'll reinforce that here with some questions coming up toward the end of the presentation itself. A little bit about our website, if you just remember weather.gov and click on Eastern North Carolina. So I know we have uh, Monica out from Kansas. Just go to weather.gov and click on the central part of the state for you. Um, weather.gov slash Newport or slash Moorhead City is our main website. Phenomenal website. I encourage you to bookmark it on your phone. Um, and I also encourage you to play with the website a little bit, enter your city or zip code, zoom in on the map. It's a, a map uh, that you can zoom into your local community. Once you get where you live, bookmark it. Save it to your mobile device and it'll act very similar to an app and you can get excellent information from the local forecasters at your home office. 
One of the things we do is a seven day forecast. It's detailed in text out to seven days, or it has an icon based forecast. This is kind of the quick and easy, when should I cut the grass? When's a good day to go to the beach? When is it gonna rain? Just kind of the highs and lows, is it gonna rain or not? The hourly weather forecast is a useful tool in your tool belt. If you scroll down uh, the page just a little bit, on the lower right is the hourly weather forecast, and you can check on and off whatever you want. So in this case, uh, let's say I want—I was curious about the wind, uh, temperature, and in this case, sky cover. So it shows the hourly temperatures over the next 48 hours. You can go forward in time to include seven days and really see any uh, type of parameter uh, that you want. James had a good point. He mentioned that he likes to use the Windy app. Uh, so I do wanna make one comment on that. Um, we don't have an official app in the weather service, and there's a lot of great stuff out there. I know a lot of folks use Windy, and we've certainly heard that in the community. The one thing I want to caution you about is some of those apps, that one in particular, um, they use forecast models. We use forecast models. The difference is, as a human, we look at all of the forecast models, and a lot of times we'll take what's called a model blend or kind of go uh, with a consensus of the models. So we may uh, differ from some models, and we may agree with some models. So you get a human-based forecast. Some of the apps that use just one specific model, if the model's right, they're great. So a day like today and tomorrow, everybody's going to be right. It's sunny and warm. It's not a really hard forecast. But let's say that particular model is not doing well with a hurricane or a, a snowstorm. It could be what we call out to lunch and, and not a very accurate forecast. Uh, so I'm not, I know a lot of them are really good at visualization, phenomenal. Uh, but just kind of keep that in mind with regards to models. Uh, if they're doing well, some of those apps will do really well. If they're not, they will not be doing well uh, at all. So I wanna slide back to weather briefings, back to our homepage. If you scroll to the bottom, we mentioned the hourly uh, weather forecast. There's also something called a weather briefing. This is when we send out a PDF document of a uh, significant weather. So in this example, Hurricane Florence or winter storm, uh, this is not going to be issued every day. This is when we think the weather is going to be bad. High end winter weather, severe weather, hurricane. Just a virtual show of hands. Are you on Facebook, Twitter, or YouTube, and now Instagram? We are. If you just search NWS Moorhead City, you can find us anywhere on social media. I like to use social media as a good example of getting good information out. And what I mean by that is our website is great, but there's a lot of information to kind of sift through. On social media, we can kind of wave our hands and say, you need to be paying attention to this. This is a good example from this past uh, spring. We've got John from operations, Mike, myself, Carl, Charlie, and Tom you have multiple forecasters talking about severe weather expected tomorrow. So that's kind of a neat thing that you can get. Uh, this example is YouTube, uh, but just search NWS Moorhead City and you'll certainly find us there. The last thing I'm gonna talk about is our mobile forecast. It's mobile.weather.gov. I mentioned it's not an official app, but if you navigate to that uh, website, you can certainly save it to your home screen um, on your mobile device, whether it's an Android or iPhone or whatever it may be and it will act very similar to an app, and it also works on PCs as well. So that's who Skywarn is or what Skywarn is, a little bit about the weather service, and then since this is a basic class where we go over severe weather, that's what we're gonna to start to get into now. And you can't really talk about severe weather without talking about one of our sister offices, a big national center out in Oklahoma called the Storm Prediction Center. They do a forecast out to eight days on severe weather risk. Very, very accurate uh, with their assessment. And they give you an idea, do we have a slight risk, enhanced risk, all the way up to high risk for severe weather. Uh, and they work in conjunction with our local office to issue things like tornado watches and also thunderstorm warnings, or thunderstorm watches. We do the warnings, they help with the watch. So since we're talking about thunderstorms, we need to talk about how they form. I know a few folks attended the winter class, so this may be a little familiar, but different ingredients. You must think I like to eat, and that is certainly the case, uh, but it's an easy way to explain mother nature. With thunderstorms, you need three ingredients. You need moisture, you need instability, which is uh, fuel for the storms, and you need lift, which is rising air. We say think of it like a recipe, because if you're missing one of those, 
the thunderstorms aren't going to work out. And if all of those ingredients are on the higher end, you have the potential for some uh, active severe weather and perhaps some nasty storms. So the first ingredient we cover, uh, we talk about this in the winter class. This is just not one that we're usually lacking. Uh, we live in eastern North Carolina. Uh, if you've spent any summer here, you know it's humid. So we usually have plenty of moisture. We've got the Atlantic Ocean and the Gulf of Mexico. Uh, so this is a staple that's always in your cupboard. Maybe you, you have tons of sugar or flour, the thing that you don't usually have to run to your neighbor for. That's moisture. We usually can check that off, no problem. The second ingredient is one that we usually are lacking, especially in the cooler months, wintertime into the spring. Summertime, we usually have a fair amount of instability, and that's because it's a difference between warm and cold air. It's a couple of different ways to think about it. The first way I like to think about it is our typical summertime day. We're very, very hot and humid, 90, 95 degrees down here at the surface where we live. As you go up a couple thousand feet in the atmosphere, it starts to get colder. The faster it gets colder, the more that contrast, the more unstable it is in the atmosphere. And what I mean is that 90 degree air parcel at the ground wants to rise really quick because it's really light um, and it can rise very, very fast. So that's a very unstable atmosphere. Um, and whenever I say unstable, I mean fuel, lots of fuel for storms. So again, hazy, hot and humid day, it's really cold, high above. That's an unstable day, clash of temperatures. The other example is more prevalent in the springtime. This is when we're hot in Raleigh and Wilmington and Moorhead City, but Asheville and Blowing Rock and into Tennessee is colder. We have a cold front moving in, clash of air masses. It's warm here, uh, but there's a cold front moving through and it's going to move in much colder air. And that causes um, a clash of uh, air masses causes an increase in instability. Anytime you hear the word instability, just think of fuel for the storm. And again, this is a science. You're not going to get a quiz on this. When you make a report, we're not going to say, what did Eric say about the instability? This is just a kickback. It's good to uh, know the science. It's, I think it's pretty neat. And since you signed up for the class, I'm sure you have an interest in science. So at this point, we're the soda bottle. The moisture is the Coke. I'm shaking it up and all the bubbles are the instability. At this point, nothing's happened yet, but boy, we can tell something's about to happen. We've got the moisture and we've got a lot of fuel for the storms. And we're gonna show you some examples of the atmosphere itself. The last ingredient is a trigger. You've got all this potential in the soda bottle, but something has to open the cap. In this case, we're talking about fronts. This is why when you walk, watch the Weather Channel or local meteorologists or AccuWeather, whatever your favorite is, they're always talking about fronts. Uh, cold fronts are probably the most important trigger of severe weather, very, very dense air behind it, and it abruptly lifts the warm air in front of it up. This is how you get the tall uh, cumulonimbus clouds, and you can have some uh, really, really tall thunderstorms, perhaps a uh, hail, and then also the potential for tornadoes. So that's a type of a li lifting mechanism. Another one is a warm front, a little different scenario. Uh, it's marked by the red line with half semicircles. In this case, the cold air is already in place. It doesn't want to budge. It's dense, it's heavy, it's got its arms crossed, doesn't want to move. So when the warm air comes in, it just gently rides up over it and you have a much shallower cloud. Notice it's not as tall. Doesn't mean you can't have severe weather. Doesn't mean you can't have tornadoes, but apples to apples, a cold front causes taller storms so they're more likely to cause severe weather, but both can certainly call, uh, cause um, you know, different types of thunderstorms. I'm gonna go back one slide because there's one more point I wanna make, and I gotta make a mental no note. I know we've got a gentleman from the office watching the presentation. I I've gotta add sea breezes. So another trigger we get locally that's kind of unique to the coastline are sea breezes. All it is is a difference in temperature between the cooler waters and the warmer land. That difference causes a pressure difference, because of the pressure difference, the air traditionally comes in off the water. Sounds fancy, it's the island or late morning breeze. We all know what we're talking about near the coast. Those are kind of like mini cold fronts because behind them, it's cooler air. And they often cause showers and thunderstorms. Again, another lifting mechanism or a trigger. All right, we're about 655. This is probably the most important part of the class. Not that you understand instability, 
not that you understand warm fronts and cold fronts, our 800 number. By far, this is the most important way to report severe weather to us. So I know a lot of you have phones, so this is the time to program it in your phone. If you don't have the phone with you, or maybe you're watching this on a phone, jot this number down. The reason why we stress the 800 number, we do this in the winter, but a snowfall report is important, but it's not gonna change that quickly. A tornado, we need to know now. Severe hail, we need to know now. So we want you calling a number that is toll free, it's uninterrupted, uh, we're gonna get that information right away. I'm gonna talk about email and Facebook and Twitter, and they're all great, but nothing do we answer in the office immediately like we do a phone call. So please remember that this is the most important way to make a spotter report. There's a certain procedure we want you to follow, not because we're super, super strict, but when it's in the heat of battle and we need to get those warnings out, we want to be succinct with that information. So who are you? I'm a trained weather spotter. Uh, what you saw, where you saw it, and the time. And the time's important. Perhaps you took shelter and then you came out and then you passed that information on. Totally fine. But just let us know that happened 10 minutes ago or something to that case. And this is my little mental reminder for, um, I think it was uh, Monica from Kansas and those that are outside of North Carolina. You won't call this number because um, this goes to our local office, but this is what we'll follow up with your home office so you get that same information because this number is unique to um, Moorhead City, North Carolina. They'll have the same procedure, but you'll call a different number. Another way to report severe weather uh, information after you call us, especially if it's a tornado, is our email. The reason why I put the email in there is it's a good way to send store or to send photos and videos, a follow-up. Same procedure, who you are, what you saw, where you saw it, and when. It goes for winter, it goes for everything, but it's really, really important during severe weather, especially if you're reporting something bad like a tornado. So email we like. Uh, especially as follow-up information. All right, so that was the most important part of the class, but we still have a lot of good stuff to show you. The next four topics are going to go into single cells versus supercells, and this is an intensity scale. At the far left, single cells tend to be not, not as a huge severe weather threat as supercells. Can they still produce um, bad weather? Yes, but they just don't tend to be as organized, and we'll get into that in a second. Uh, so we're going to go from left to right, and I like to back things up with pictures. Uh, this is a single cell uh, thunderstorm, kind of in the middle stages. You've got some puffy cumulonimbus clouds, so we have instability because you can see the bubbly nature to the clouds. We have moisture because we have clouds. We have some type of lift because they're rising, but they are very in the vertical. And what I mean by that is they're not tilted at all. So once they get going, they just collapse on themselves and they don't have a long time to live. So this is a better uh, example of this. This is a radar cross section. Uh, again, they happen very quick. They pulse up. So between five and 10 minutes, we're like, wow, where did that come from? Look at this red, this dark red, indicating some heavy rain, maybe some hail, really looking good on radar. But since it's very in the vertical, it develops up and then it collapses on itself in between 15 and 20 minutes. It's producing perhaps some gusty winds, a little bit of hail and rain. Borderline severe. Could a tornado happen? Maybe, um, but the life cycle of the storm is so short, we tend to get things like hail, high winds and heavy rain out of Paul storms. Again, they just don't have enough time to get uh, really, really bad. Occasionally, can they produce severe weather? Yes, especially in the summertime, uh, sometimes when we're super hot and humid. So you're gonna notice a theme. I'm gonna go over all the different types of severe weather we can get and how to report it. The first thing up is um, hail. We wanna know about any size hail, not just quarter size hail. We don't wanna just know about what our thresholds are because again, you're helping us gauge the storm. Maybe the worst part of the storm didn't even go over your house and you got penny size hail, then we know down the street where it's showing up worse on radar, they likely had larger hail. So use some type of reference, um, P, penny, quarter. A lot of us don't have loose pocket change as much anymore. Uh, so the best thing would be to measure the hailstone with a ruler. 
uh, go out af outside after it's safe. You know, we don't want you going out in the middle of the storm and measure the whole diameter of the hailstone. So they can be smooth or rounded. Uh, if it's jagged, just measure that whatever the widest width is, and then you can call in the exact size. So in this case, it's five inch hailstone, uh, pretty big. Lower left is a reference to quarters. Uh, we love pictures because, you know, if you just send us a picture with just hailstones, it's kind of hard to tell without a reference. But if you throw that quarter in there, we're like, yeah, that that's good. Good report of quarter size hail. Never, ever, not ever, ever, ever report marble size hail. The reason for that is marbles vary. Um, is it the red marble, the green, the gray? Um, so marbles are not a good reference. Uh, measuring is best, but if you use something standard like a coin, that is perfectly fine. Any size hail we want to know about, give the size of the largest stones. So let's say you have a lot of hail outside. It's mainly nickel, a couple of the size of a quarter. That's what we would want to know about. And never, ever, ever use marbles to report uh, hail size. So remember that picture I just showed you? It was varying the vertical. And because of that, the storm developed and then it fell apart on itself. Notice what's happening here with the picture on the left. These clouds are tilted just a little bit. And this is because we have a little bit more shear in the environment. That's what this graphic on the right is trying to show. Uh, real light winds down near the ground and then stronger winds as you get higher in the atmosphere. That can induce a twist or we'll call this shear. And because of that, the storm is tilted. And the importance of that is instead of lasting 15, 20, 25 minutes, the tilt allows these to develop into multiple cells, lines, and clusters of storms, and they last 40 minutes or a couple hours. So because the life cycle is much, much longer, they can produce things like flash flooding. And again, since they're tilted, they are ingesting new warm air repeatedly, and it continues kind of that storm engine from falling apart versus when it's in the um, you know, upright position like a, a pulse storm, it just collapses and shuts the whole thing down. So when we get multiple storms, especially going over the same area over and over again, we call that training, and that's where you can have flash flooding. We want to know about flooding. Uh, we're talking about something significant, so not ponding, uh, not the low spot that always gets water. We're talking about, hey, man, this only happens every couple years. I've never seen this before, that type of thing. Uh, in this case, we don't want you out there measuring, you know, with a ruler like like we do after hailstones. Uh, but use your eyes. Hey, it's up to a car. Um, it's a, at least a couple feet up on a stop sign. The road is washed out. Um, that type of thing. So use your description to let us know uh, what is happening. This is an excellent time to point out Coco Raws, a virtual raise of hand. Who is a, a big college basketball fan? I, I certainly am. Um, so Coco Raws is a program that uh, in the month of March, they have a campaign called March Madness, trying to recruit new uh, folks to the program. Uh, we're going to talk about that in the next slide. Um, but while we're on this one, if you already have a rain gauge, roughly two inches is our threshold for letting us know. Um, you know, we're not going to care if you call in with an, uh, an inch, but we just don't want you thinking you got to call in for every sprinkle. But if we get two inches of rain in a short period of time, or two inches of rain over a day's worth, that's a pretty good time to call us. Coca Raws is a program we help with. Uh, this is certainly a little bit more of a commitment. It's not to scare you away, but our program is please call us when the weather is bad. Coco Raws uh, is expected that you report every day. And before that sounds too crazy, they've got an awesome app. And most of the time it's not raining. So you just go in there and report zero. Uh, the days that it rains, you have a rain gauge like this on the left. Um, you go out and read it. And again, it takes about a minute to make an observation every day. So real, real easy stuff. If you are super into the weather, if you're a young person looking get to getting into meteorology, uh, this is a great program to take a part in. Um, in the chat, let me know if any of you are in Kokoraz. We usually have a few folks uh, that are already in it. Just go to this website and you can find out more information. And I should mention at this point, not only do you have the PDF from us, I'm going to send you a follow-up email tomorrow that has the links for the Storm Prediction Center, our website, all our social media and Coco Raws and all the training for Coco Raws is on the website. It's fantastic. If you attended the winter class, 
Um, most of that training for snow measurement was from Coco Ross. All right, it's about 706. We're pretty much on the home stretch, a little bit more on squall lines and supercells. We're going to give you a couple quiz questions, then we'll turn it over to you. Um, if you're just joining us or forgot, uh, please ask any questions in the chat and I will certainly get to those. Um, a lot of times they may pop up as I'm presenting, but I'll, I'll address them at the end. So back to the um, you know, squall lines and multiple cells, we have a little bit more shear, a little stronger rising air, which we call an updraft. So the storms can organize, they can produce flash flooding or they can produce strong winds. This is what we call a bow echo. Things in mother nature don't just happen for any old reason. Um, this area of heavy rain and, and thunderstorms is pushing out because it's being pushed out by some strong uh, winds on the backside of the storm. And often you see what this is, which is called a shelf cloud. It's actually on, we have one of these uh, posted on our Skywarn page, a very, very ominous looking sky. And there it is. This is from our uh, webpage. I forgot it was in our presentation. So this is before we had an 82 mile per hour gust at Fort Macon. A shelf cloud doesn't always mean severe weather. Uh, it is the rain cooled air ahead of a uh, thunderstorm. But at the very least, the winds are going to pick up and you're going to have a wind shift. But sometimes it also signifies, um, I jumped there, I forgot there was audio. I'm not sure if you all can hear that, so I'm going to let it play through twice. So I'm muted at this point. If you couldn't hear it, all it was was a lot of wind. This is a microburst. It looks like a hurricane. Um, in a thunderstorm, I mentioned that rising air in the thunderstorm itself. Uh, there's also, you know, whatever comes up must come down. There's an area that's called a downdraft. It's rain-cooled air. That's where you have your heavy rain and your strong winds. We call this on a smaller scale microburst, and it can produce wind damage on the order of 80 to 100 miles per hour. So winds are something we want to know about. Do you have to get an anemometer? No. If you have one, great. Let us know what the official observation was. Uh, but we're looking more for what was damaged. Are there any trees down? Um, do you have any branches down? Was the tree already dead? Was it kind of weakened? Do you have damage to the buildings, your home? Um, and then I mentioned, can you estimate the wind speed? Uh, there are estimations on uh, line like a Beaufort, Beaufort scale of damage and, and uh, tree swing and things like that. But this is probably what we're least concerned with. Uh, we're most interested in what's going on in your neighborhood, your backyard, that type of thing. So at the beginning, I really emphasized the 800 number. Facebook is another way to report. Um, this would not be the first way to report, especially if it's a tornado. Uh, but much like the email, it's a good way to send us pictures. So who you are, what you saw, where you saw it, and when. Um, same type of procedure, and you can certainly make those reports on Facebook. All right, now we're at the far end of the spectrum. At the far left, uh, we had kind of weak shear, weak rising air, and because of that, uh, the storm was in the vertical. It fell apart pretty quickly. Pulse storm, pulsed up, pulsed down. In the middle, we had a little bit more shear, a little bit more twist, a little stronger updraft, rising air. Because of that, it was tilted, and we got squall lines, um, flash flooding, hail, microburst, stuff like that. At the far end, the strongest shear or twist, the strongest updraft, rising air, that's where we get supercells. That's the most dramatic type of severe weather. Uh, this is a textbook severe thunderstorm supercell. Uh, we'll go from left to right. You have very, very strong air coming into the storm itself. Um, and then on the front side of the storm, you have uh, rain-cooled air descending. This is where you get your shelf cloud. This is kind of the dark side of the storm, heavy rain, wind and hail. Uh, this back side where you have the strongest lift, um, it may actually have lightning skies in a, in a textbook, textbook scenario, uh, but that is often the southwest side of the storm and you can get your uh, wall clouds and eventually tornadoes. We do not go in depth on this in the basic class. The goal of our basic class is know the 800 number, please call us. At the end of this month, April and May, I set it up so we had a couple basic and then an advanced class. 
In the advanced class, we go into dual pole radar, supercells. Um, it's, it's really kind of our gift to you because at that point, you should know how to report. You've been to a basic class, you've been to a winter class, uh, and you want a little bit more of an education uh, presentation. That's what the advanced class is. And we'll certainly go uh, more in depth on that one. And we'll, we'll talk about it at the end. So this is what a supercell looks like on radar. Um, you may have heard of the classic hook echo. Doesn't always mean tornado, but it means you know super uh, certainly some uh, rotation. And in this case, it was um, this is back a couple of years ago off of Atlantic Beach, and this is what it would look like on our weather diagram, uh, kind of the hook area, and this is where the rotation would be. Again, that's where we stop at the basic class. So one way we get tornadoes around here is certainly uh, during tropical weather. Uh, most landfalling systems have tornadoes with them, some more than others. Um, if you've lived here at least a couple years, two years ago coming up, uh, it's hard to believe it's only two years coming up, uh, uh, Hurricane Dorian, we had an EF2 hit uh, Emerald Isle. So just because of the sheer um, rotation in a tropical cyclone, we often can get uh, tornadoes. The other thing we get around here are water spouts. Um, a water spout is a tornado over water. Happens two ways. Uh, the, the severe thunderstorm way or the way that um, land-based ones would be a, a tornado that's on land and it moves over to the water. Um, that's when it becomes a water spout. Um, those usually fall apart pretty quick. The more traditional ones are ones that form on the water. You don't necessarily have to have a thunderstorm, but same ingredients, moisture, rising air, uh, and the trigger is usually uh, some type of shower or, or thunderstorm that gets everything going. Uh, these are often very, very small. Occasionally, they can come on land and cause a little bit of damage, uh, so we certainly want to know about that. So, the key with tornadoes and funnel clouds, it goes all the way back to the beginning, it has got to have rotation. Uh, you'll see gnarly looking clouds, low hanging clouds, but it has got to be rotating uh, to be any one of these. So, first thing we're going to ask you is, does it have rotation? Uh, does it extend to the ground? What type of damage do you have? And this is the most serious situation. I, I hope you never have to call this in because uh, this means that's real close to you. Um, if you do call it in, make sure you do it after you've been in a safe location or that you are in a safe location. This type of information is very, very important uh, because you're saving lives down the line. We can add this information to a warning or we can issue a warning if need be. I already talked about Facebook. Twitter is another way you can report NWS Moorhead City. I won't spend a lot of time on that uh, because, again, pictures, videos, um, but we really, really want you calling us on the phone. All right, 713. I've done a lot of talking, so I've got a couple poll questions for you. So here in a second, a poll is going to pop up on your screen. Nobody sees it in the audience, so don't, don't worry if you get it wrong. And you're going to answer it what you think it is and then uh, we're going to go over it so um, all of them have pictures first um, so i'll do the pictures and let me launch the poll here in a second so this poll question is are these funnel clouds so look at this you know picture this low hanging triangular cloud and this other crazy one um, touching the ground pretty much looks like it's touching the ground the hint since this is not video is they are not rotating so are they funnel clouds so let me see so you all should have the poll question uh, on your screen is this a funnel cloud you don't see the picture anymore but the hint is there and it's a big one you don't even need to see the picture uh, so is it wrote uh, is it a funnel cloud and again the key is um, it is not rotating so the answer is it yes it's a funnel cloud or is it no it is not a funnel cloud so i get about five more seconds looks like most have voted let's see should be able to share the results and it's most of you got it right it is not a funnel cloud very very good uh, the reason for that is it is not rotating so if something is not rotating uh, it can't be a funnel cloud it cannot be uh, a tornado has got to be rotating. So we try to emphasize that with um, with the you know pictures and things of that nature because let's face it, these clouds look crazy. If I saw that and didn't know the context or I hadn't been to a Skywarn class, I would think I would think it was a tornado if I didn't, didn't go through the training. But the point of emphasis is it is not rotating. So no, no matter how crazy it looks, 
We get these a lot. They're called scud clouds. We love acronyms in the weather service and weather. Those are scattered cumulus under deck. So next Jeopardy question, or if you all like trivia, um, maybe you'll get that question. So those those are not um, not anything uh, related to a funnel cloud because it's not rotating. Since we're talking about tornadoes, uh, we rate them based on a scale, the enhanced Fujita scale. We go out into the community with a binder and we're assessing uh, what is damaged and based on what is damaged is how we determine a wind speed. So we'll look at things like how was the structure built, um, what you know, what's the damage to the trees, um, you know, things like that. That gives us a wind speed. But to determine if it's actually a tornado, we look at the pattern. So they're actually two separate things. Wind speed is determined by what is damaged. The pattern determines if it's a tornado. If it's a very convergent pattern, kind of a narrow, convergent, chaotic pattern, uh, that is indicative of a tornado. If everything's either in the same direction or kind of fan-shaped out, that's a, a microburst or straight line winds. Um, notice that you can have a 100 mile per hour microburst. A lot of times people think if there's significant damage, it has to be a tornado. And it's more if it's uh, the pattern, um, which is uh, determines whether or not it's a tornado. So kind of a, a little uh, background on that. All right, this is a little bit of a trick question, but I'll, I'll give you a hint on this. So is this a tornado or funnel cloud? Uh, the hint is look close at the picture. And the other hint is it is rotating. So uh, since it's rotating, it's got to be one or the other. So look really, really close at the picture. And I'll do the same thing. I will um, ask you what you think. So is this a tornado or funnel cloud? And I, I think I messed up this <laughs> question again. I know some coworkers are, are uh, laughing. So we will say, I don't know why I put yes, no, but um, it's, uh, I forget what I I forget what it is if uh, yes was funnel cloud or tornado. So just answer on your own because I obviously messed up the answer part. Uh, but is it a funnel cloud or tornado? Let me close out of this so you can uh, see my whole point, which was so if you guessed at home that it was a tornado, you are right. I messed that yes no up. I don't know why I did that. So anyway, this circulation extends to the ground because you can see the dust and dirt. Uh, so I'm just trying to reemphasize. Got to be rotating in the first question. Um, the second question is already rotating. Is it in contact with the ground? That's the distinguishing uh, feature on that. Very, very good. Let me redeem myself and ask uh, one more question uh, before we mess up here. All right, so this one should be more straightforward. What is the best way to report severe weather? Um, those are all ways we can do it. Email, online form I didn't mention, that is on our website um social media or the 1-800 number so i'll give everybody about another 15 seconds to vote is it email online social media or 800 number i think i made the point good with this one you all got it right awesome program that into your phone in all seriousness again um the reason why we're emphasizing this is um you know if we get bad weather we want to know about it right away Couple more slides, then it, we'll turn it over to you for questions. We're right on time at 719. MPing is a great program. This is more for winter precipitation. You can report wind damage and stuff like that, but uh, I just wanna make you aware of it. It's pretty neat uh, to report precipitation type and what's going on. If not the best for true severe weather report. So I would certainly call us with that. So as we wrap up, I hope I emphasize that your reports are, are crucial. We really need them uh, at work. We mentioned calling us right when it happens. Um, let's say you go away and you get back and there's a lot of damage in your yard. Give us a call because even though it's a sunny day and it's five days later, um, and be real clear that it, it happened when you were on vacation. That way uh, it makes sense because if you call us on a sunny day, we're going to really wonder what's going on. Um, but we always are following up on storms to know what happened. Knowing what happens helps us um, make more accurate warnings in the future. So if you do get damaged and it's a couple days later, don't think it's too late to call. Call the 800 number and just be real clear. Hey, um, this happened a couple days later, but I wanted to make you aware about it. There's a big myth. If something's really bad, we must know about it. Sometimes we're the last to know. And again, if you're in Greenville or you're farther inland, 
you are protecting people east of you. So if we know about sooner and we have a warning out, we can put in a spotter has confirmed hail or a tornado. And think about it. You get a lot of alerts on your phone, right? And some of them you might, oh, we, we always get these. I'm not going to pay attention. But what happens if the next town over from you is reporting a tornado or hail? Are you going to take that serious? Yes. So that's where your reports are really crucial. And um, again, please let us know what's happening. So in summary, tornadoes or funnel clouds we want to know about that have got to be rotating, even if they look crazy. Um, don't call them in unless they're rotating. Any size hail, not just the big stuff. Uh, wind damage, what's damaged, flooding if it's significant, uh, and then heavy rainfall, anything over two inches uh, would be good to know. Summarize the reporting procedure. This will also be in your email. Um, so if you didn't get a chance to write the number down, um, you can certainly do that. And as a reminder, as I talk about our um, future classes in a second, all of this is on our website under the Skyborne section. So if you ever forget, just go to our website. We've got it all listed. It's very rare when we don't want to hear from you, but if there's non-severe weather to report, we, we don't need to know about it. So if you're calling to say, hey, it's really windy or something not concrete that doesn't help, uh, if you're calling to report a lot of lightning, again, we can see the lightning with our detection system. So anything non-severe related, don't necessarily need to know. Um, anything damage, hail, any size hail, that type of thing we want to know about. So I appreciate uh, some of you in the beginning had mentioned that you had uh, attended the winter class. So that I really, really appreciate that. Um, looking at some of the, the folks commenting, David Wright, I see that you uh, have a, a Kokoraz gauge on order. Our goal is that you come back, and thank you for those that came back. Uh, Aaron mentioned that he had been once before. Uh, Dixie mentioned she did the Skywarn uh, in the winter. That is what we want. In reality, luckily, you're not probably going to get a tornado or a crazy hail, which is good. But you are going to have rain, and you're going to have snow at some point. So if you get into the habit of calling us, knowing who we are, what we're looking for, the procedure, then it's like second nature to call us. Uh, so please, you know, let us know about that. And Robert, I appreciate that. Uh, he mentioned one of our former coworkers that had taught the class. He has since retired, but we love hearing about uh, those that have taken the class in the past. Really, really good stuff. So the point is, if you get snow, uh, let us know about it uh, to the nearest tenth of an inch. Uh, we have training that's recorded on our um, online website. So if you didn't get to go to the winter class, you can take that whenever you want. This wraps up our class. Uh, the sister class to this is the basic one. Again, that's in the fall and winter. Uh, we do do an advanced class. Like I mentioned, it's the end of this month, end of April, end of May. If the times don't work, it's recorded. It's on our website, so there's no, no worry about that. Uh, and then the flood tropical uh, one is as we need through the year. All of this information is on our website. And a lot of you may have gotten an email from me if you um, are in the spotter database because we send emails there. Bookmark our website. I'll show you this at the end. Um, this has all our recorded training. Last year it was called YouTube training. Now I just called it recorded because we have everything there. Winter, if you don't want to wait for the advance, you want to take it tonight, you can do that. You can take it whenever you want. So that is it. Uh, I'm going to leave my email up. That's the best way to get a hold of me. Um, we do want folks to remember that they can contact us if they've got any questions. Uh, you will get an email from me uh, tomorrow with a certificate and follow-up links as well.